Today we're going to look at how to actually achieve texture with a range of different pens using a range of different techniques. I've done a video recently explaining that to master ink sketching. All you need to understand is shapes, so squares, circles and triangles, and texture, which is what this video is all about. So today we're not just going to look at one type of pen, one type of texture. We're going to look at fountain pens and their sort of variation that they can achieve. We're going to compare this perhaps to the control you get from a fine liner. And there is some variation there, but actually the biggest variation in texture from a fine liner is changing the thickness of the pen, going from a 0.5 to 0.03. But we'll also consider things that you might not immediately think about when thinking about how to texture your pen. So using few day pens, for example, or even coming out with a brush pen or soluble ink. And suddenly there's all sorts of other textures you can achieve with very little effort to create amazing ink sketches. So let's get started and let's see what happens when we start filling up our page here. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the simple idea of hatching. And hatching is where we take repeated straight lines. And through that, we generate both value and also texture. And for me, I think this is both the simplest and also one of the most lovely techniques because it doesn't seek too much to be a, a realistic approach. What it's doing is going, we are creating this scene, but we're creating it with our pen. So we're, we're showing the artistic process as well as showing that we can apply the artistic process to a scene and then create some lovely texture and an element of realism at the same time. And this technique is really good for fine liners where you get nice controlled lines or for fountain pens where you can also create these lovely controlled lines which really show off that unique feature of ink which is being able to create bold dark lines. So it's very simple but it is very effective. To take this on to the next level you might start thinking about how to create light and dark. So here all we've done is a series of vertical, horizontal, diagonal lines, and we call that hatching. Cross hatching is the next level. So in this, we actually use the same process, but we can build up those lines. So here, just using a fountain pen, you can see it's just as effective using a fountain pen. And now, as we build up our lines, so I'm still going vertically and I'll cross on top. So that's why it's called cross hatching. So now you can see we have not just a different texture, but a different sense of the darkness of the area. So texture and the value or the darkness in ink sketching is very closely linked and something to always be thinking about. We don't have to think about it so much if we're using say oil paints or acrylics, because when we go for a darker shadow, let's say, we might just do something as simple as adding some black or deep blue or paint gray to our color and that creates darker shadow in ink well what we need to do is think about how we can create a texture that fills up the white space and creates something darker so that is where cross hatching is a really really useful technique it doesn't have to be this controlled either so we can use say Let's take a, another pen again. We can use like a few day pen or a, a flexible pen or even a fountain pen. And we can build up through scribbling, through fairly random marks. So we could have just these little scribbles which build up and build up and create both different textures, different levels of dark, and also just a more fun, loose and spontaneous feel. And you can use these kind of marks to create incredible portraits, to create incredible landscapes just through the sort of study of light and dark. And you can see the advantage of this is, look, it's super quick. That's taken me no time. Compared to the careful hatching, this has taken me absolutely no time. And it fits well when you're doing those loose, those quick sketches. You just want little marks to fill up that space. Along these ideas, we could then approach our textures to make them feel more real. So using my a different fountain pen now, so this is a, 
a Twisby 580 fountain pen. Something which is really great to do is just repetitive shapes. So repetitive shapes might be just something a bit abstract. So they might just be little squares coming across. But equally, those repetitive shapes might be the actual texture that you're looking at. So in this case, you can imagine that this repetitive shape is, in fact, a brick wall. And we can just fill up the appropriate area, the brick wall in our scene, through these repetitive shapes. Um, but they don't necessarily need to be super neat. So this is, for me, fairly neat. I'm sort of trying to keep it symmetrical, trying to suggest a lovely symmetrical structure. But we might do the same thing with, for example, a dry stone wall. The dry stone wall is much more random and the lines are more random. They've got more variation. So we have these deep black areas. We've got these finer areas. We've got little stones stacking up. We've got big stones with big heavy shadows. So now we are doing repeated shapes, but they're more random. So it's some kind of hybrid between you know, really doing repeated shapes and actually almost doing the, the sort of scribble method. Really lovely for creating that feel of an old wall, for example. Or again, it can just be an abstract texture. There's no reason you can't use text and techniques like this in an abstract manner. Another way it might work is if you have a, a sort of field of rocks, I was going to say, but like gravel. And all you're going to do there is find all these little stones, fill up that page with lots and lots of little, tiny, blitting and blotting stones. Some of them will be dark, some will have dark shadows. So this is where using our fountain pen is super, super effective because the fountain pen can be really fine. We can create really tiny little marks, but we can create bolder ones. We can make the ink pool and blot. So loads of different ways we can use a fountain pen, much better for these sort of loose and scribbly methods where the flexibility of the nib lets you really just go to town and, and have a lot of fun and really create sort of crazy textures on the scene. Um, another idea along these lines is, you know, natural things also have repeated shapes. So if we take the bark of a tree, it will have these repeated shapes, which are the kind of uh, the mountains, the, 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 the outsitting bits of bark on the tree. And in between them, they'll have the valleys, which will be darker and shadowed because, well, because they are literally dark and shadowed. So having those repeated shapes, but also combining that technique, combining those uh, random lines as well, and uh, combining repeated shapes with hatching, you, know, you can build up, again, yet another different feel of a texture and that moves us on to something uh, more time consuming but also very very lovely and that is the idea of stippling so stippling or pointillism is where we just use simple dots simple dots to really build up our texture and you could imagine this could be the sand on a beach it could be the gravel on a road what we do is as we get the texture denser and denser we just bring our line, our, our marks, sorry, our dots, denser and denser. Much like we've done with the cross hatching, this can build up to be quite an incredible sort of layered approach to creating value, to creating shadow. You can see that it's also very time consuming. Now I'm using a fine liner here because it's easy just to dab down. This technique can be perfectly adequately done with a fountain pen. It just takes a little bit more time because you're not able to just dab it down straight down like this. I'm also using a slightly bolder fine liner because again, uh, using a very thin fine liner, we're going to have smaller dots. So it's going to take me a lot longer to build up these marks. But you can imagine, I hope you can immediately imagine how these simple mark making exercises can actually be extremely useful uh, when it comes to creating different kinds of textures in our scene. Now, I also promise you some outside of the box thinking. So one example of this is to use soluble ink. When we start our ink sketching, we're prone to thinking you know, ink sketching is all about the lines. Then maybe we start going, oh, it's about the lines and the, the hatching or these other techniques. But we forget that actually ink can be soluble. So we can actually use our lines. So if I draw one line here, I've loaded the, the page with ink 
and now I can create a texture from that just using a tiny bit of water. And we can use ink loading, so drawing two lines, for example, now, to change the amount of texture we're able to achieve. So with these two lines, we'll get a slightly bolder value coming out. We'll get a different way that the ink is flowing because it's flowing from more than one direction. And then maybe here we do three lines. So now, again, we're going to get something a little bit different, a little bit different flowing out even more depth of colour. And then lastly, what do you think is going to happen? Well, we could do four lines or we could do even more. So we could do four lines, we could do two lines in the middle as well. And from there, we're going to get an even bolder bit of tone, bit of value in there, just to really, you know, immediately create a heap of drama in our scene. Really effective technique for quick sketching. And again, we forget that actually pens can be used in all sorts of ways. So why do I have to load the page at all? What I could do is just take the ink straight from the pen. And now I can actually use it like a Japanese brush. So I've got a normal watercolour brush and I can create a nice soft wash. Equally, if I wanted to, I could use more of a dry brush technique. So I just draft my brush a bit, take a lot more ink this time, and we'll get this kind of rougher, deeper edge. I could draw it off even more, make sure I've got lots of ink, and hopefully now we'll get like a rough line like this. And we can layer up our, our ink as well. So I can take one wash gently, nice and gently, and then let that dry. And like magic, we are of course dry. And now I can come back in and I can layer. So I can create these layered textures of ink where I'm not just producing a single flat wash. I'm not just producing a single dry wash or anything like that. I can actually layer up my ink to create more interesting and varied textures. And, you know, people will often ask, does this damage the pen? Um, I see no reason why this technique should damage the pen at all. What can happen is if you use loads of water, you can zap all the, all the ink out of the ink flow. And sometimes just starting to draw again can take a little bit of scribbling until it's nice and dark. But no, can gently touching your nib with a brush damage your nib? I really don't think so. Imagine what you're actually doing in in this, just listen to that scratch and then listen to that. There's no sound, there's no damage coming from a very soft nib or very soft brush on your very hard nib compared to scratching on paper, watercolour paper card. Now we've got some more outside the box thinking here to come. So something else we can do is the idea of wet on wet. So if I just apply water to these four little cubes, and I take something different. Now I've got a brush pen. This brush pen has got a India ink in it. So it, it will be fairly water fast when it's dry. But when we apply it to water, when it's not yet dry, it moves around amazingly. So I can do lots of things here. I could do a line through the middle and watch that flow out. I could just drop it in and get these sort of blooming textures, much like watercolour. I could do a line around the outside and then create almost like a, a bush or a bauble or something like that. Maybe it's a tennis ball. Or you can draw within it, draw using this soft wet on wet. And look, we can make the suggestion of a little tree with the leaves sort of dancing around. And last but not least, let's consider other uses for a brush pen. So a brush pen you can use to hatch. You can do the same skills we've been doing. You could use it to scribble, make repeated shapes. But look, when we do these repeated shapes, it's so easy to create such dynamism. Brush pens are really worth trying out. Just like a few day pen, you get a huge variation. And with a gentle touch, you can go and do all of these techniques, all of these techniques, but with an extra sort of sudden emphasis. You know, if I want to create these kind of pointillism, well, look, suddenly I can get this huge variety of different marks. If I want to hatch, I can do it, but I can do it with bold lines and thin lines. And if I just want to create big black areas, if I want to dry brush, I can do all of these things. So pushing the boat out, trying some textures with a different pen, a brush pen, a few day pen, is my last major tip for how to develop your textures with your pen. Now, if you want to discover more about ink drawing, I've got an in-depth course, more than six hours of video, 30, 40 pages of handout, and a fully 
interactive community where you can post all of your sketches, get feedback, learn from others, learn from me. Um, and all of that is on sketchloose.co.uk. Um, so I'll see you over there if you like, or otherwise, watch this next video to find out more about ink sketching on YouTube. So thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos. If you enjoy my content, please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really, really happy. Thanks again.